All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 35, the esoteric hieroglyphs of the ancient Egyptians. So let us suspend our mutual disbelief and propose that the dynastic Egyptians really did build the Egyptian pyramids during the timeline proposed by conventional archaeologists. However, let us also imagine that our interpretation of the script of this ancient civilization, the perplexing symbolic language of hieroglyphs, was perhaps misunderstood or maybe deciphered in a way that only retrieved the most superficial understanding of the text. In my opinion, the hieroglyphs of the ancient Egyptians are an esoteric language designed with an interpretation that was intended for public consumption, but which also feature a more profound significance meant for only those who had been initiated into the sacred mysteries, specifically in our case related to the mysteries of ancient chemistry. So in today's episode, I'm going to present a few examples of some hieroglyphs that once the deeper meaning is unveiled, can give us greater insight into the civilization that created them. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with today's episode. So the first few examples of some esoteric hieroglyphs that contain multiple different interpretations, depending on their context of usage, come to us from the Geopolymer Institute in France in their analysis of several hieroglyphs that they have discovered related to the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. So the first verb that we're going to discuss is the verb irikat, which in the conventional context means to create. So you can see here, this is a depiction of the god Khnum creating the Ka or the eternal stone. However, the Geopolymer Institute has discovered that this exact same verb found within a different context takes on its deeper significance. So this sentence comes to us from the famine steel describing the construction of the pyramid of Zoser and the hieroglyphic sentence reads, since creation, nobody but you has manufactured the artificial minerals to build the temple. So again, we see here this exact same verb utilized within a different context, taking on its esoteric meaning related to the chemical manufacturing of artificial minerals to create the synthetic geopolymer stone. So the sentence now reads, since creation, you are the first one who uses synthetic chemical manufacturing to create geopolymer to build the temples. All right, and the next verb described by the Geopolymer Institute in France is this verb chusi. And you can see here this combination of hieroglyphic symbols intended to signify to erect, to build, or to construct. And you can see here that this does not depict laborers cutting stone from the quarries. It shows two gentlemen using pounders and molds to create these artificial stones. And that is exactly what is being implied by the Geopolymer Institute. So the conventional interpretation of this hieroglyphic sentence here is with these stones cut from the quarry, they have built the royal tomb. Now, the Geopolymer Institute is proposing that the reinterpretation of this sentence within this new context is with these synthetic geopolymer stones, they have built the royal tomb. Now, I would also suggest that we have misinterpreted the word pyramid and the intention of this hieroglyph. So my interpretation of this new sentence within its esoteric context would be with the synthetic geopolymer stone, they have built the chemical manufacturing facility. All right, so now that brings us to Champollion, the Rosetta Stone, the development of Egyptology, and the beginning of the modern industrial revolution. So let me give you some background on the conventional history associated with this time period. So the beginning of modern Egyptology began with the invasion of Egypt during the Napoleonic era, and the Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799. 23 years later, the Egyptian hieroglyphs were finally transliterated by Jean-Francois Champollion, marking the beginning of modern Egyptology. So let me just make a note on Champollion. So this gentleman was an academic linguist whose lifelong goal was to decipher 
the lost meaning of these Egyptian hieroglyphs. And he was in an active competition with British researcher Thomas Young to see who could decipher these hieroglyphs first. They were in a race rushing to try and figure out what these hieroglyphics really mean. So I am not suggesting that any of their interpretations are wrong. I'm just proposing that perhaps they glossed over the deeper esoteric meaning simply because of their lack of understanding of the science and technology that was being utilized by this ancient civilization. And that is exactly what is being discovered by the Geopolymer Institute in France in their reinterpretation, given this new context related to chemistry of these ancient hieroglyphics. All right, so next up, about 30 years later, we have Flinders Petrie, an English Egyptologist traveling to Egypt and introducing modern, legitimate archaeological techniques for the research, documentation, and survey of these structures. So everything that we know about the ancient Egyptian civilization and the Egyptian pyramids comes directly to us from the exceptional work that was being produced by these early Egyptologists during the late 1800s and early 1900s. So I am taking absolutely nothing away from the unbelievably accurate work that was produced by these early researchers. All of the documentation, survey, measurements, internal components, etc. that we have of the Egyptian pyramids come to us from these researchers. However, I am simply suggesting that all of these discoveries were occurring at the very beginning of the modern industrial revolution. The idea of a large scale chemical manufacturing facility did not even exist at that time. So these individuals would have had no ability to conceive of the Egyptian pyramids being giant machines because they didn't exist. So the modern industrial revolution was a transition into new chemical manufacturing processes that was occurring across the world in the time period from about 1760 to about 1840. And you will see that this time period coincides directly with the development of modern Egyptology. So during this transitional period, they were going from hand production methods to machines, new chemical manufacturing and iron production processes, the increased use of steam and water power, the development of new machine tools, and the rise of the mechanized factory system. These were all brand new concepts. And these gentlemen that were researching Egyptology were not chemical engineers. These gentlemen are very, very wealthy, glorified treasure hunters who just happened to discover a lot of very valuable information while they were simultaneously desecrating the graves of this ancient civilization. They would not have had the ability to conceive of the Great Pyramid being a giant chemical manufacturing machine, a sulfuric acid manufacturing complex, because that idea did not even exist. The process of manufacturing chemicals on a large scale did not even exist at that time, so this would not have been a concept that was even possible for them to conceive as a function for the Egyptian pyramids. So that brings us to the statement by Athanasius Kircher, one of the most prolific polymaths and writers of the 16th century. And any of you that are familiar with works on alchemy or the sacred esoteric mysticism will already be very familiar with this individual's name. So Kircher had stated that the hieroglyphs were symbols that cannot be translated by words, but expressed only by marks, characters, and figures, meaning that the script was in essence impossible to ever decipher. Others considered that the use of these hieroglyphs in Egyptian society was limited to the religious sphere and that they represented esoteric concepts within a universe of religious meanings that was now lost. Furthermore, with the onslaught of Egyptomania in France during the early 19th century, scholars began approaching the question of hieroglyphs with renewed interest, but still without a basic idea about whether the script was phonetic or ideographic and whether the text represented profane topics or sacred mysticism. And this is exactly what I am proposing regarding the reinterpretation of these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs within the context of their esoteric meaning. This language was an esoteric language that would eventually become the mystical alchemical symbols of Europe. And these symbols were meticulously designed to conceal their true meaning from everyone 
except only those who had been initiated into the sacred mysteries of ancient chemistry. So now let's take a look at these two symbols which have been integrated into the dynastic Egyptian religion but which also have a deeper esoteric interpretation as related to ancient chemistry. So here on the left you have the symbol of the scarab which is utilized in the dynastic Egyptian religion as a symbol of the rising sun. However, this dung rolling beetle is an ancient esoteric symbol which implies the initial stage of methane production which is gathering of the cattle manure, which is exactly the behavior of the dung rolling beetle, which is collection of dung. Here on the right, we have the apis bull, another symbol which has been integrated in the dynastic Egyptian religion, typically in the context of an astrological deity. However, within the context of its esoteric interpretation related to ancient chemistry, we know that cattle manure is the essential reactant in the production of methane gas. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we have two clear examples extracted from the dynastic Egyptian religion, but which also contain a more significant esoteric interpretation as related to the science of ancient chemistry. So now, ladies and gentlemen, and last but not least, that brings us into the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So let's imagine that as the first explorers descended into the depths of the Red Pyramid, they were as perplexed as I was upon my first entrance into this structure, upon seeing the fluid black staining covering the walls of the internal chambers, and being overwhelmed by the intense smell of ammonia emanated from the final synthesis chamber. Of course, with their limited understanding of the capabilities of these structures, they would have opted for only the most superficial explanation of these abnormalities. The staining in the smell, it must be caused by the bats. However, now with our modern knowledge of physics and chemistry, and also with our modern analytical technology, we can know exactly what this staining is and what caused the smell of ammonia. And ladies and gentlemen, I teased this in my previous episode regarding the CO2 furnace found inside of the Bent Pyramid. And it is with the greatest pleasure that I can finally reveal the chemical composition of the samples taken from inside of the Red Pyramid by the Aceta Project in 2010. And the black stains found inside of the Red Pyramid are almost completely composed of... And just a quick reminder, that limited... First edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say thank you. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 35, the esoteric hieroglyphs of the ancient Egyptians. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I think you can see what direction we are headed for the next one, so I will just leave you in suspense until then. To all the viewers here on The Land of Chem, if you're enjoying this type of material, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you liked the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. The website is www.thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book. Follow me on Instagram, at The Land of Chem, for daily posts, pictures, videos, and other material related to my research. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time.